Something huge is about to happen to our housing market as mortgage rates have been above 7% for a month. How insane is that? On top of that, as of right now, at the time of this video, average rates right now are at 7.3%, which is absolutely insane. Uh, besides two days in late October, these are the highest rates we've had since December of 2000. So in today's video, I'm gonna share some insights regarding what lies ahead, given the fact that rates have been over 7% for a month, which is just absolutely crazy. Uh, but also gonna be sharing some uh, trends we're seeing right now, especially compared to previous years, to give us some insights about where we're headed. And before we get started, if you guys are looking for a real estate agent referral, whether you're looking to buy or sell a house, then check out that link below, which is homeandmoney.com slash Jason to get started today. And I'm actually really excited to share this video with you guys. I make this video for you guys uh, one week or every week uh, regarding the latest trends we're seeing right now and some insights regarding what lies ahead here. So I hope you guys appreciate this. So this is based on, or the data I'm sharing in today's video, uh, in some parts is from the realtor.com. Uh, they have a weekly housing market update. They post this on a weekly basis, of course. They actually just announced this on the third. And just like my previous videos, I'm not even gonna be, I didn't actually even read their article here, but I'm actually gonna be looking at the data they have to share. So here's what the you go to. You go to um, realtor.com uh, slash research slash data. It takes you to this website right here. You click on this link right here, and it takes you more or less to this right here, to which I have color coded and also provide some analysis regarding trends we're seeing right now. And by the way, if you guys watch my uh, previous videos when I go over this uh, stat, these stats here, I'm gonna be uh, kind of taking a little bit different way of looking at this because I'm gonna be looking at the current week right now compared to 2021, 2020, all the way going back to 2018 to see what we're seeing right now, how it compares to uh, previous years, especially compared to pre-COVID. So I'm gonna be sharing the trends we're seeing right now and also giving some insights regarding my personal predictions about what lies ahead. But first I wanna share this with you guys because um, this is pretty crazy. So I'm making this video at around noon on Friday. Happy Friday for all you guys out there uh, watching uh, the video. Actually, you guys are watching this on Saturday. So I hope you guys are having a good weekend so far. But look at this though. Uh, the 10 year treasury is at 4.126%. How insane is that? Uh, increase about six basis points from yesterday. And today at the time of this video, rates are averaging at 7.30%. Uh, that's a slight increase by 10 basis points from yesterday. Uh, compared to one year ago, rates were at 3.17%. And also rates have increased by 413 basis points or 4.13 percentage points from 12 months ago. How insane is that? Also look at this because I tend to share uh, the trends regarding rates over the past year. But look at this, going back to 2009, look at this trajectory in rates we've seen ever since August of this year. Uh, August, the average rate was 2.92%. Now the average for October was 7.09%. Absolutely insane. Um, have Rates have absolutely skyrocketed, more than doubled since January 1st of this year. So that's what we're seeing regarding uh, rates. Let's have a look at what we're seeing regarding home prices, uh, housing inventory, uh, price reductions, and much, much more. And by the way, I'll share my predictions here with you guys uh, towards the end of this video here. So here's what we're seeing right now. I actually really enjoy making this video for you guys because I get to uh, do a, a lot of analysis regarding uh, current trends. So hope you guys appreciate that. Uh, and by the way, this video took me hours to make, by the way, too. So anyways, let's take a look at this. Here's the meeting list price compared to one year ago. Uh, this is a percent change in asking prices for people listing their houses for sale. So as you guys can see right here, for the past six weeks, more or less, we've been seeing some stagnation uh, or some plateauing effect regarding asking prices across the nation. But what happened last week though, look at this, asking prices decreased slightly from 13% gain on a year-over-year -year basis, now to a 12% gain uh, compared to 12 months ago. So last week we saw a slight decrease in asking prices, uh, but as I note right here, uh, we're approaching the winter months and of course the holidays, and during that time our housing market tends to slow down greatly. So I wouldn't be surprised to see these numbers uh, start to decrease in the weeks and months ahead. And also on top of that, given the fact that rates are very close to highs we've seen back in December of 2000, which is absolutely crazy, Again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of these metrics here uh, really start to show a slowdown in our housing market here. All right, so that's asking prices, trends we're seeing regarding that. But let's have a look at housing inventory. 
So take a look at this. Last week, compared to the same week one year ago, we have a 40.4% increase in the number of houses listed for sale. And actually over the past seven weeks now, um, active listing inventory has actually been increasing. Now what's pretty remarkable given the fact that um, active listing inventory has been increasing on a year over year basis for seven consecutive weeks, it's remarkable to see this uh, growth uh, because active listings have been decreasing on a year over year basis uh, for 17 consecutive weeks. And also over the past five weeks, we've been seeing double digit decreases in the number of new listings compared to a year ago. So despite the fact that new listings have been going down for the past 17 weeks, um, active listing inventory or housing supply has been increasing for seven consecutive weeks. This is much different compared to the past few months though, because look at this, uh, from July 2nd all the way until October 1st, we saw uh, inventory gains in the range of 25% to 30% but now the gains are at 40%. This is also much different compared to May of this year as well, when we had more or less the same number of houses for sale compared to the same time period in 2021. And also much different compared to uh, the start of this year, where we're seeing decreases of around 30% uh, compared to a year ago. Now it has completely reversed though, because now we have gains of 40%. And by the way, the gains right now at 40% is in line with altosresearch.com as well, because as of October 28th, uh, according to them, there was 577,000 houses for sale. And one year ago, there was 413,666. So by my dumb math, that's a 39% increase of housing inventory according to Altos. In any case, I find it remarkable to see that we have gains in the range of what, 30 to 40% over the past several weeks, given the fact that we had the same number of houses for sale back on May 7th of this year. So our housing market has been shifting greatly in a very short period of time. And again, going back to new listings, new listings are down compared to one year ago for 17 consecutive weeks. And also we're seeing uh, increases or decreases in the number of new listings by double digits for the past five weeks. And despite this decrease in the number of new listings, um, housing inventory has been increasing for seven consecutive weeks, which is pretty astonishing. So for the week ending October 29th, new listings were down by 13.2%. Let's have a look at uh, Redfin because for new listings for the four weeks ended uh, October 30th, new listings were down by 17.7%. And new listings have been decreasing really ever since uh, June and July of this year. On top of that, the number of houses being listed for sale uh, over the past four weeks right now is 74,284. This is below 2019's levels at this time uh, because back in 2019, there was approximately 85,000 houses listed for sale. And back in 2021, there was 90,000. And in 2020 at this time, there was approximately 93,000 houses listed for sale. So it's pretty eye-opening to me to see that we have fewer new listings compared to the past three years. But despite that, we have an increase of house inventory. Again, a gain of 40% from last year. And here's another trend we're seeing right now because it's taking longer for home sellers to sell their houses compared to one year ago. We did see a slight decrease last week, uh, so it's taking about six days longer to sell a house. Uh, that's on par with what Redfin's reporting. Let me just actually briefly uh, share that with you right now. Uh, so it's taking about six days longer to sell a house uh, for the week ending October 29th. According to Redfin, for the four weeks ended uh, October 30th, it's taking approximately 7.7 .7 days or eight days uh, slower to sell a house compared to 2021. But going back to the data from realtor.com, uh, it's taking longer for houses to sell uh, compared to one year ago for the past 14 weeks in a row. And again, one thing I wanna mention is that when we're talking about days in the market, that's for houses that actually have closed escrow. In other words, the sale has been finalized. So days in the market is a lagging indicator what our housing market was like approximately one or two months ago when the home seller accepted offer from the home buyer. So I would suspect that days in the market should continue to increase given the fact that rates have been spiking so much lately. And changing gears slightly, let's talk about price reductions. So this a column right here is the percent change in the number of price reductions compared to one year ago. 
So last week, it's 98.3%, uh, meaning there was approximately 98.3% more price reductions uh, compared to the same week in 2021. Uh, that was a slight decrease from last week, but as you can see right here, uh, for the past uh, four weeks, we've seen a huge increase in the number of price reductions. And in fact, the increase of price reductions uh, that we've been seeing over the past four weeks is on par with the year-to-date highs we saw back in mid-June through mid-July of this year. And that's because during this time frame, we saw increases in price reductions in the range of 90% to 110%. This is much different compared to uh, the first three months of this year though. This is because we saw fewer price reductions compared to a year ago for the first three months of this year. And on top of that, for the first six weeks of this year, we saw decreases in the range of 28 to 31 percent on a year-over-year -year basis. So in other words, our housing market has been shifting greatly given the fact that we have nearly double the number of price reductions uh, from 2021. Also, we're seeing a huge increase in the share of reduced price listings. So according to Altos, uh, the share of reduced price listings is at 43 percent right now. Compare this to uh, May 13th, the share was 21%. In other words, the share has increased or has doubled in the past five and a half months. And here's a chart showing price reductions over the past three years. So this is on altosresearch.com. Uh, the share of price reductions right now is at 43%. Compare this to, look at this, March 18th, the share was 17%. Also compared to one year ago, at 28.7%. In 2020, 26%. Uh, and pre-COVID back in 2019, the share was only 36%. So the share right now at 43% is at least a three-year high. So before I share a summary in today's video and also with my um, housing market predictions uh, at the end of this video, I wanna share something new with you guys. Uh, this is because I tend to talk about year-over-year -year changes uh, in this video for you guys. I post it every Friday. Uh, but in today's video, I actually wanna share how this week compares to the past few years. So back in 2021, uh, 2020, uh, 2019, of course, 2018 as well. So have a look at this. This is uh, last week, uh, which is, again is October 29th, the week ending October 29th uh, this year. Back in 2021, just really briefly at a high level regarding rates, because obviously this year is really hard to compare uh, to previous years, given the fact that rates have more than doubled uh, since January 1st. Uh, we really haven't seen anything like this. So anyway, so I just want to share this with you guys because back in 2021, let's just go back, 2018, uh, rates actually increased slightly in 2018. They went from 4% and they ended the year at about 4.5%. So they actually was technically in an increasing rate environment, but not even close to what we're seeing this year. Uh, that's probably the closest we've had regarding uh, a, a year where interest rates actually were increasing for the year. They actually increased from 4% to around 5% in November, but once the uh, December 31st hit, rates were around 4.5%. So that's what happened in 2018. Obviously in 2019, rates fell, and of course in 2020, rates fell again. Uh, and also in 2021, uh, rates really held fairly steady at 3%. So we really didn't see a whole lot of rate movement uh, for the whole year in 2021. So let's look at what we're seeing regarding these stats here uh, over the past few years here. In, in my opinion, the best year to look at is 2018, uh, the most recent year where rates were actually increasing. Again, not increasing by uh, what, from 3% to 7%, but still increasing from four to four and a half. So look at this. Uh, median listing price actually increased 7.3%. Compare that to right now at 12%. But look at this. This is where the big differences are. Um, active listing inventory uh, increased by 2.5% compared to the same time period in 2017. Compare that to now, we have a gain of 40%. So a huge increase of housing inventory on a year-over-year -year basis this year, especially compared to um, 2018. And also look at this. Back in 2018, we had 40.7% decrease in the number of new listings compared to 2017. Now we have a 13.2% decrease. 
Um, also in 2018, houses were actually selling faster by six days compared to the previous year, back in 2017. So houses were selling faster compared to 2017 versus right now, it's taking about six days slower to sell a house uh, this year. And here's another big difference in 2018 because uh, back then, the number of reduced price listings uh, increased by 26% on a year-over-year -year basis, but now we're up by 98%. So to briefly summarize how uh, this year compares to 2018, uh, the inventory growth this year on a year-over-year -year basis is far greater than 2018. On top of that, uh, it's taking six days uh, longer to sell a house compared to in 2018, it was taking six days faster compared to 2017. And all to say we have a huge increase in the number of price reductions compared to 2018 as well. And one reason for this is due to a fallout in home buying demand this year, but also because of overzealous home sellers because asking prices are still up by 12% on a year-over-year -year basis, whereas in 2018, they were only up by 7.3%. So some other things that kind of caught my attention when looking at the past few years compared to uh, this year is inventory growth. Because look at this, back in 2021 and 2020, we had 23.6% fewer active listings in 2021. And in 2020, we had just under 40% uh, less housing inventory compared to 2019. Vastly different than right now, a 40% increase. And two more things I want to share because look at this. Back in 2020, uh, it was taking 14 days um, faster to sell a house compared to the same time period a year ago. And also it was taking 11 days faster back in 2021. And obviously the number of price reductions were absolutely falling off a cliff given the fact that housing demand was so high. In any case, I hope you guys appreciate that additional analysis. If you guys do enjoy that, then leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to provide that in future videos. But let's go ahead and give you guys a summary regarding today's video because that was a lot of information. So first, number one, inventory has been rising for the past seven weeks in a row and it rose by 40% last week compared to a year ago, of course. The growth is significant given the fact that there are fewer new listings uh, compared to last year for 17 consecutive weeks. And on top of that, for the past five weeks, the number of new listings have been decreasing by double digits on a year-over-year -year basis. In contrast, this would look a lot worse if new listings were skyrocketing, but they are not. And number two, mortgage rates have been above 6.6% every day in October. This should slow down housing demand further, causing inventory to rise further as well. Average rates are at 7.3% at the time of this video, which again is a third of November, uh, according to the Mortgage News Daily. Uh, this is more or less the highest levels since the year of 2000, excluding two days in October, of course. This is also a 225 basis point increase since August 1st of this year. And a 413 basis point or 4.13 percentage point increase over the past 12 months. Rates have more than doubled from January 1st and from one year ago. On top of that, according to Fannie Mae, mortgage rates have never doubled in a year before, dating back for data that goes back to 1971. Absolutely insane. Uh, number three, we saw a huge increase in the number of reduced price listings over the past one month. Also, the share of reduced price listings has more than doubled over the past five and a half months, or has doubled in the past five and a half months. Uh, this is also far higher compared to at least the past few years as well. And this, of course, is likely to increase given the surge in mortgage rates lately. And number four, houses are taking longer to sell compared to the same week one year ago for 14 consecutive weeks. Again, though, this is a lagging indicator, though. I do expect this to increase in the weeks and months ahead, given the fact that we're approaching the slower months and also due to the spike in rates we've been seeing so far this year. So here are some potential huge changes ahead uh, to our housing market, given the fact that rates have been at or above 6% since September 1st of this year. Absolutely insane as that. I mean, on January 1st, rates were about 3.3%. Now they're 7.3%. Absolutely insane. I don't know how many times I've seen insane in this video, but I just kind of like blown away by this uh, these uh, stats in today's video. So number one, 
more buyers are getting priced out or they're opting to wait out this housing market given the fact that rates have been increasing so much. And as I mentioned in previous videos, for every 1% increase in mortgage rates, that causes a 10% decrease in buyers' purchasing power. And because rates have increased approximately 4 percentage points over the past 12 months, that causes a 40% decrease in buyers' purchasing power. And number two, there's a lack of housing affordability. Um, housing affordability remains a big, big issue, especially given the fact that it's about $900 more per month month for your average monthly mortgage payment uh, compared to one year ago to buy a median price home today versus 12 months ago. And number three, there's likely more declines in home sales and home prices for the remainder of 2022, given the fact that rates have been increasing so much over the past 30 days. And as I mentioned right there, this could be significant given the fact that rates have been increasing so much. Also, number four, to combat inflation, the Fed will raise rates until inflation is in line with long-term averages. The impacts of regarding consumers of regarding the Fed increasing the Fed's fund rate is this right here. This will increase interest rates for HELOCs, credit cards, and new auto loans, but savings accounts will also increase as well. As I mentioned right here, we probably won't have too much relief regarding the rise in mortgage rates until inflation winds down. And number five, we won't see the true effects regarding rates over 7% until stats are released for November and December, so please stay tuned for that. And number six, Subscribing is for free. These videos take me hours to make, so I hope you guys appreciate these videos. And of course, if you do, please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that, and I appreciate you as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and hope you have an awesome day.